Good evening, Final Fantasy Randomizer and RPG Limit Break fans, and welcome to the Duckling Boot Camp 2024 race. I am Sonny Rath 11, and joining me in the booth tonight is, of course, Jay Scheidel. We're doing Yo. it again. Uh, what is this, like three or four now with these boot camps? I love it. I think so. So, be uh, fun. yeah, it is, because tonight we have Floaterless. <laughs> yeah. This is going to be an interesting race. It's been a while since I've done a floaterless seed. It's been quite a while since I've done a floaterless as well, but, you know, without the floater, you want to talk about what all is actually turned on in order to be able to access the oh. entire world? Yeah, so one quick quality of life thing, you're going to see a lot less of our overworld encounters to allow our runners to be able to run around the overworld a lot more. But yeah, we have basically every uh, map edit that we can get on. There's two that we don't, we'll talk about later, but we have our early early open progression, which is our pretty standard one nowadays, gives us that river dock over by the volcano section, a few others. But we also have extended open progression. So above Northwest Castle, you're going to be able to walk from dwarves all the way down to Elfland. There's not a river there anymore, so you don't need the canoe. Also, we have the Ryakon Desert dock, so you can just go pick up, oh, wait a minute, we don't have an airship. We can't go pick that up. We have, let's see, Bahamut Cardia Dock, so we can go straight to Bahamut anytime that we get the ship and head on in. We have the Lafane River Dock, which extends that little uh, lake at Lafane down to the ocean, so we can actually go on in and get to Lafane. And with that, we have the Gaia Mountain Pass, which allows us to walk from that river dock up to Gaia to get it. And finally, kind of one that I've not played with much, Sonny, maybe you have, the River to Melmond. So this is a path, a river from uh, Dwarf's Cave over to Melmond. I have played with the river to Melmond quite a bit, and it does change some of your logical progression a bit. As if you get the canoe, that then allows yeah. you access to Earth Cave, Titans if you have the ruby, Sardis Cave if you have the ruby, uh, a bunch of nice places. But... Yeah. You know, tonight, we don't have Titans incentivized, but we do have some areas with random chests incentivized, such as Ice Cave, Volcano, and Sea Shrine. So, with Ice Cave, where that floater would normally be, it's not going to be there, and it's not even going to be in the seed at all. The Volcano yeah. incentive is normally the Red Dragon Guarded chest on Carrie's floor, and the Sea Shrine incentive is not going to be at its normal spot, and we are off! with that yeah really trying to get our our runners to learn where all these different chests are so with volcano and sea shrine both being just completely random we'll probably see some chests that we don't normally check when you know exactly where that incentive item is exactly yeah. it's gonna be very interesting to see getting a little bit of stream syncing going on right here so we'll be back in just a second but you might have been thinking with some of those map edits, it's like, wait a minute, aren't there a ton of chests at Bahamut? Why? We, we can't get any of those with the Bahamut dock on because we can't land the airship anywhere. So, Sonny, what have we done to make sure we can get those? So, with those extra docks being on, it then allows us to be able to walk towards said towns in order to be able to access literally everything that's needed. <laughs> So yeah. it, it does change routing significantly, but it doesn't change it in a way that you would expect it to. It's not a poor routing change. Oh, speaking of routing changes, you see what Shumbabi over here on the left is doing? We didn't go into Corneria at all. No, instead using that elemental plus magic that was on the Black Mage in order to take down Garland immediately and rescue Sarah, therefore making Canaria Castle in and of itself much faster to access, as well as only really needing to take one stop into Canaria. Yeah, we got talking on the, the difference in the flags and some of the seed that we didn't even talk about our uh, bonuses and malices here. So still being the Duckling Derby, we're, we don't have any malices going on. But each of our characters have a couple of bonuses going on. The fighter has plus 50 agility and plus 20 HP to start with. That little bit of HP bonus is kind of a nice little little jump here. The thief has the improved cat claw and plus 20 strength. 
the black belt, which we don't have any of our runners on stream doing, but has promotion fighter armor and clean magic. The red mage has plus 10 luck and plus 10 hit percent. The white mage can equip hel uh, helmets and gauntlets and also has the improved Thor hammer. And the black mage has this elemental plus magic, which we saw over on Shimbabi's screen, and resists earth, poison, and I believe that is status. Yes, that is status. People want to make it stun, but it's status. <laughs> or stone. Yeah. But from the royals, the king holds the adamant, and Princess Sarah is holding on to the earth rod in and of itself. So once the canoe is found, or even the ship, as well as, I believe, the canal, uh, that will then give access over to the Earth Cave. But we have a Bicky sighting over here on Shumbabi's side, making use of that Elemental Plus, as well as Level 1 Fade. Love to see that show up. For sure. And Fire 3 does go out after a lot of the pirates have taken their attacks, which is a little unfortunate RNG on Shum's side, but RNG is going to do what RNG is going to do. And that's level 5 on the party, and there is the okay. herb coming in from Bicky, which is a very so nice that, find in and of itself. That telling us that adamant has to lead to something. So definitely want to go all the way back over and turn that in to see what we get from it. Indeed, and Shum heading over here to check the Hint Giver. Mazmun plus two over in Waterfall. That's really nice to see. We also get to see Heal 2 at level two white magic and level two black magic coming in with Okay. <laughs> That's new oh Fire my. 3 Warp Zap. Okay, we're three minutes in. We have Fade level one. We have Nuke level two. That red mage is looking really nice. The problem is that Fade is in slot two, so uh, that is a completely unlearnable slot by the red. That is fair. Red mage spell permissions still get me occasionally. That is fair. And then the the permissions get even more wacky when you switch over from Red Mage to Red Wizard, because then you have okay. to remember a bunch of extra spell permissions, and that's fun in air quotes. Okay, so is this Ada going to give us, or we got to go down to, okay, the chime. So the herb now is where we're pushing for. Yep, it looks like it is off to the land of the elves. But... Here is that extended open progression that we were talking about at the beginning, being able to walk straight down from Dwarf Cave there. Indeed, and you know, on top of that, that key in and of itself, if it shows up, that could be absolutely huge as well. Oh yeah. As Canaria Locked is still incentivized, but at the same time, there's also a marsh cave that is very doable right now. And there is the canoe coming in from the Elven okay. Prince. And unlike on a normal sea, that blows this world pretty wide open. We can't go to the northern, northern continent yet, but we can pretty much hit anything down here in the southern continent that we need. Indeed, and Shum is going to go through the river system here in order to get to Crescent Lake and using some encounter manipulation along the way. Did you see if we found cheap tents or something? I really wasn't paying attention. There were cheap tents in Provoca. Nice. Nope. Yep. And houses at 631 really isn't a bad investment if you do need to charge your spell slots on the go. The sages have the ship. Okay. So we talked about this on one of the previous seeds, I know, but the sages over here on the far uh, eastern side of the continent, like, where does that ship spawn? You know, there's a dock right outside here where you normally come to Crescent Lake, but I know the that's, answer. Out, that's outside the inner sea. So, Sonny, Sonny, where is that ship? So that ship is actually going to spawn over at Elfland, as since this is on the southern part of the inner sea, the Elfland Dock is registered as the closest dock to where the ship would spawn. If it were up in Ice Cave, 
that would actually cause it to spawn over in Provoka. Oh, and Shumbabi, totally forgetting that. We don't have a canal. Yep, yeah, no I, canal I, means issues. I always have to remember it because you have to assume that the uh, open progression is not on. So you have to assume that you cannot walk through that volcano uh, that volcano forest we have. So wherever the closest inner sea dock is with none of the open progression flags on is where that ship's going to be. Exactly. All right, DM check in some magic here. Does find harm for and cure for. That's for. really, really nice to see, but only opts to buy harm for instead of buying cure for, which, you know, harm for in and of itself, if you run out of fade charges, really, really nice spell to have. But you kind of want that cure for for some of those later boss battles. You're... Your knight's down on one knee. Pop him back up. Indeed. And with that, Shum has moved into the ice cave, and the first encounter are a pair of white dragons. That's nice to see for EXP, but not nice to see for the damage that they deal. With that, DM is about to pick up that ship with the best hint giver ever. <laughs> I didn't read the hint giver last time. What was it? The ship can be found at Crescent Lake. <laughs> okay, that that makes Ailes comment. Okay, I get it. Oh, DM. Okay, is trying to get an encounter. I wondered if DM was about to go over and check that dock. No, he's he's looking for encounters here. This is a decent EXP zone and actually all right for money. 4,000 EXP, a short sword, and 658 gold in the three chests that you can warp back to, and a blue dragon on the undead tile. Yep, and we've explained enough times, I'm not going to necessarily do it again here, but if you ever hear the warp trick in Ice Cave, that was just it. The mage tile being on the frost dragon tile is fairly nice to see. I mean, it's yeah. it's decent early game EXP, but you know, at this point, EXP in and of itself might be uh, a slight bit of an un of a non-issue. Yeah, we'd like to see a couple extra levels, but I don't think we're gonna stick around for anything. All right, Shum checking the six pack, gets a cabin, some money, and there's the bottle. Okay. Go ahead check and keep the rest of them searching, though. A pro cape's not bad to see. It is at least a shield that that thief can wear for now, as DM is doing some divergence and going straight into mm -hmm. the Gurgu volcano. But you notice Shum did not check that last chest in the six pack. There's a trap tile in front of it, and probably just decided it wasn't worth getting to the encounter and everything else. Check the free ones and run away. All right, DM running into the armory right off the bat. Silver helmet, iron helmet. Okay. All the helmets. See if you remember that our white mage can wear it. Yep. Which he remembered some exp some money some more exp <laughs> oh some gers row even more exp there's a lot of exp here oh i'm sorry Ooh. i'm sorry gur ogres with brack and hyenas with What's that glare there's the canal yeah I think it's time to warp on out of here. Well, yeah, and finding that canal, we now have the canal, we have the ship. The world is open to us now. We've got to find our few key items, but we can get everywhere. If DM does not get wiped here. Don't put these things into the ether. Don't say that. Well, the werewolves have cremate. Oh, save. Say, okay, good.
DM going ahead and leaving uh, water, or wow, leaving ice for a little bit. I'm okay with this because of our party situation, but we're never going to get closer here. It's not like, hey, I can come back whenever I get the airship, because there's no airship. Exactly, that's where the problem lies with ice, but at the same time, not having a full party does make it a little bit more scary, and oh, yeah. not having the run engine makes it even worse. Yeah, I don't hate the play, it just feels bad. Now, there actually is a chance, albeit not a very good one, that Carrie could be taken down, but DM is just straight up leaving ice for later. Yeah, with the levels that we're at right now, we've got other places we can go. I think I'm okay with this for now. Like I said, it feels bad to leave that area abandoned, but we can come back. I mean, the, the problem in this is that there's access to that bottle already mm -hmm. because canoe is in tow and with the mountain pass as well as the river dock that then allows access to Gaia immediately now ultimately speaking it would be better to just hold off on it until you have the slab and have translated it Yep. But that might not be feasible in this case. So, Shumbabi is going to show us off here a flag we have going on, which is the, uh, wow, Dragon's Horde. So, the Incentive Cardia Island, yeah, it's going to be right here behind Bahamut. Grabbing the cube. That's the D6. That is sky doable. So, uh, if people want to get the sky chant going, by all means, go for it. We have three dungeons doable at this moment. Maybe not level, but we have all the stuff we need for it. Well, with level four having Bane, it's not impossible to get all four of them done. Yeah. It's just unlikely. But Shum is heading over to the caravan, going to check and see what is in here. And we don't see the shop item, which means it's either going to be here in Onrak or it's going to be over in Gaia. Yeah, got a 50-50 shot. And it's the tail! And... That's a okay. pretty significant find. We're also starting to tear down the things that a that, uh, bottle could lead to here, so... There's still a definite chance we need it, and that DM's uh, gamble over there it will pay off, but yeah. That is very possible, and we do know that the Mosmune is going to be over here in Waterfall, thanks to the earlier hint. And on top of that, the Opal, I believe, is in Ordeals. I believe uh, there was a hint for that as well. Okay. That's putting more weight back on that bottle being something we need, then. Exactly. That's the only part that's slightly worrisome. Best case scenario, which also is worst case scenario, that bottle <laughs> leads to a ribbon. Exactly. You'd kind of like it to be like the opal bracelet or something, which it's nice to have, but the ribbon's nicer to have. Exactly. All right. The Waterfall Tile, which is normally Wiz Mummy, Mummy, Cockatrices, and Pyrolisks, is instead... Oh, it's just wizards. It's the Wiz Mummies before they die. Yep. A Black Shirt plus one, Gold Bracelet minus one, Mage Stick plus five is a very nice find. On top of this Gas Dragon, this is some serious EXP for this some to good pick greed up. chests. Yeah. And sitting at level 13 prior to promotion is really, really nice because yeah. that ninja starts learning spells, or the thief starts learning spells after promo at level 15. I always find it nice to be at roughly the level you are that the minute you are in the seed. And 13 to 16 minutes in is pretty good. Oh, 100%. And with no Oxy Ale in tow right now, it is time to bounce elsewhere. But first, 
got to make a stop over here at Bahamut to promote. And there's that green dragon for DM as well. And he did not pick up the Maza beforehand. It's going to be a little bit harder battle, but we've got Fade, we've got Nuke, it's going to go down. And with that, Shum has promoted and is sitting pretty right now, honestly. Yeah, we're in really good shape. Level 13 right now going into this. We've got pretty much the world open to us. Yeah. Yeah, everything's looking really, really good. I like this check ordeal. is kind of our last out-of-the-way place before we have to start diving some dungeons. We know exactly what we need. Indeed, and that's going to make things go a heck of a lot faster. We still got that random in C shrine, so that could give us a little bit of a a little bit of a headache. But we know where it's at in Sky. Yeah, this should go pretty quick. Now, the nice thing about the random chests, and I don't think we actually said this yet about them, is they actually act similarly to a pseudo loose item. <laughs> So if you're wanting to get used to searching for loose items or items that are incentivized, but you have more items than locations, this is a good way to do it. Yeah, it narrows it down to where you know something's going to be in that dungeon, but you've got no clue where it's at in that dungeon. So you're still kind of checking like you would be for a loose. Exactly. Ordeals so far just given money as the payout nothing too big just yet 5900 exp is really nice to see it's not even good money oh that's the key in ordeal okay where where, where did i see the opal because i know we saw a hint for it but this agamatile is really nice to see yeah we're looking for oxy and loot really to finish the game over on shimbabi's side indeed We've got Corneria locked. Would you run all the way back there, or would you keep kind of clearing some stuff out here first? Honestly, since I'm in proximity of it, I would go into Sky. Yeah. Because I don't think Shimbabi's checked uh, the bottle either. So we're exactly. right here. Two chest or two checks to chest. Wow, check. Two chest. Yeah, two. <laughs> in say that five times fast. Check. Two checks to make, if you will. Or, my personal favorite phrase to use, two birds with one stone. Yeah. Now, worst case is one of these is going to be slab. And so we're going to have to leave here, go back to Melma, and then come back here. But, you know. I mean, <laughs> that's not going to be too bad of a trip to make, fortunately. Yeah. Love the witch telling you how to get out of the inner sea, you know, out of the inner sea. Right. All right, DM is running through ordeals. Does hit one of the bad pillars, but fortunately it just led to the same area. That's the ribbon plus two from the bottle, so okay. it's best case scenario, but worst case scenario at the same time. Yeah, we can definitely get through the seat without having to go back to Ice Cave, but you want that protection all. It'll be fine. Yeah. Nothing's ever gone wrong of running without ribbons, right? Yeah, yeah. If you got a 42 black belt, yeah. I mean, to be fair, I've actually had worse luck with ribbons than without <laughs> ribbons. <laughs> yeah. Shoutouts to an old friend, Dengwu, on that one. Zapped through two ribbons in one race. In the same Ooh. turn. Well, we've got a Mirage Tower over here on the left, and we are skipping all of these chests. Sky is one that we have in the vanilla location, so we'll know exactly what chest to grab on the way up. Oh, yeah. And for clarity's sake, that wasn't Dang that got zapped. That was me. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't have to so, be a better guy. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate that. All right, so the run through Mirage is going to be fairly quick. And on top of that, yeah. really, really good EXP coming out of this. 
So it makes things that much better in order to find more progression. That key, there's still locked Canaria on the table, which could also be the Ruby, which yeah. would be really, really good, but at the same time could also be really, really bad because Sarda could have the slab. And then that slab leads to the TNT, the TNT leads to the Oxia. Yeah, the, the Ruby's one that we don't usually think about a lot. Like, it's a nice to have, but hey, we're going to grab the floater eventually. We'll just land on the other side of it and whatever. But without a floater, that Ruby really becomes important. Exactly, and I was about to say, what floater? And we did see Pyrolisks with a really, really bad ability on them. They have crack. Oh, oh. Yeah, they're, they're a little terrifying. These Manticores, on the other hand here, are going to go down relatively quickly. DM is back okay. here in Canaria. Finds a Dragon Armor plus four. That is some great armor for that, uh, or that knight, especially if we don't find that ribbon. No kidding there. And the slab's wow. coming in from Canaria Castle. So making the venture back to Canaria was a, potentially a very, very good play. Yeah. At the very least, we know that Shumbabi's going to have to go back there and then come back here. But whoa, that is an Oxy Ale from Sky. So we've got full, like, clear dungeon mode going on. Just looking for a loot. Yeah, just need the loot, which, you know, that could be in C, because yeah. it could be slab into TNT, into crystal, into item. And DM is going to go ahead and jump into that okay. cold, cold cave. We do have a Wormex sighting over on Shum's side, and I think, think we're gonna I get think it? we're going we're to McDonald's. All right, so we have Invis 2 coming out. We have Fast and we have a Nuke. Nuke for 246. Invis 2 coming out. Going to boost that party's evasion by one stack. Six stacks is going to give full evasion. Fire 3 is going to come out, but Fast goes out before the ninja swings. Unfortunately, only healing magic is heal 2 right now. Nuke's going to come out 172. Black Mage 1 is down. Nuke 2 okay. comes out 143, and that is a dead... Warmech for 24,000 EXP, putting the party, except for Black Mage 1, up to level 22. Yeah, we got our main melee up, we got a White Mage and a Black Mage up. Yeah, that, that's some great experience. That's big. And that also gives us a little bit of reassurance that, hey, we're up here at Tia. We can take out Warmech, we can probably take out Tia. That is if Black Mage 2 doesn't die. Ew. And that okay. is going to be the scariest part of the Bridge of Destiny in and of itself. But with Warmech being patrolling, Warmech is taken off the Bridge of Destiny and does not have to be worried about. So it is a nice situation. Thief swinging at that fighter dealing 481 damage, and that's level 23 on those three party members that are still alive. Another fighter with a preemptive, gets the run immediately, and it's on to Tia 1. Call it, Jay. Alright, we got an invis, a fast, and a swing. Unfortunately, the fast coming out after the uh, the fast, or the swing, but get everyone uh, all roosed up here. Fight, nothing much. What was that? 70 damage for that thief? Nuke, invis, and another swing coming out here in a second. 621. Let's see if this nuke ends up taking out Tia. Not quite. We're probably down to, what, 200 health left or so? If that. Fade does. 125? Yeah. we got to be really close to about 200. This should do it. 800. Wow. Maza with fast. It's powerful. It's very, very powerful. Alright. DM. Going through. Gonna perform the warp trick. And unfortunately, find out there's nothing here. All right, Shumbabi is taking the Matoya dock. So that river system next to Matoya, great way to get down here to get to Corneria or to get to Temple of Fiends if you're coming from the northern continent. 
Yes, the Matoya River Dock has a multitude of uses and really comes into play throughout a few different routing choices. Mm -hmm. I think it's most commonly seen when you're finishing up in Sky or Sea and trying to get to Temple of Fiends. But like this, we know we need to get to the locked dock instead of going all the way back on around in. Like, just hit there. And you know, the other nice part about this is with that ninja having all the spell charges, that's four charges of fast just right there. Yeah, we are our self fast caster. So there is a potential of this ninja being able to man mode, but you know, there are a few items missing in order for that to really happen. Okay, we had metal slimes on the six pack over here in Ice Cave. That would have been a great little grind if we needed it. Agreed, and it's going to be a decent amount of EXP for DM here, as that's 17 across the board. Really nice to see, and there is that bottle. Which we know turns into the uh, ribbon, so it's definitely useful. But will it send them on a little bit of a wild goose chase here? So here's the nice part about everything. DM having that slab, he can run over to Melman, he can translate it, he can go clear Earth, and then head over to the Lafayne Gaia area with the slab translated, being able to speak the Lafaneish language, mm -hmm. and do all three turn ins or all three incentive checks at the same time. We're seeing a little bit of the loot gauntlet, or goblin coming up. Ooh, and DM going ahead and warping back down. I think probably walking out would have been a little bit faster, but you live, you learn. All right, C opens up with a white shirt. That's really, really nice to see. Yeah, especially without our ruse stick being incentivized, we know that we have a guaranteed ruse item if we have to go man mode. Yeah, Guaranteed Invis 2 item is really nice. The only downside of Invis 2 versus Ruse is six turns versus three in order to get up to full absorption. Or not full absorption, full evade. Yeah. I'm thinking Spellcrafter with Fog 8 right now, which <laughs> that's much later on down the line at this point. Those are some ridiculous flags that are fun to play, but oh my. Yeah, you, you want overpowered spells, play some Spellcrafter. I say that for Archipelago. Alright, Shum is going to go ahead and head straight down to Kraken. This is one of the dungeons yep. that has the random incentive location on the chests. So, yep. this could pay I... off massively. Yeah, I think I heard when Saracen and Luffy were talking la or on Sunday here that this is what you want to do when it's random. If you know that you can take out Kraken, you come out on this side, there's a chance that your incentive item will be in one of these boxes. And if it is, heck, don't go to Mermaids at all. As it's going to be unnecessary. Hey, look, Opal Armor. And a lot of it at that. <laughs> Isn't that vanilla in this location? Like, not in this of those chests, but don't you get Opal here normally? If I remember correctly, it's yes. Um, it's but so you long. get it over on the mermaid side. Okay. Loot Goblin definitely like... is coming out on DM side, though yep. he's looking... I know exactly what he's looking for. He's looking for a katana. Yeah. We've got that dual melee. You want to get your Maza and then the katana, because we have removed Excal from these flag sets. Yep. And Flame Shield minus one, really, really nice to see for this ninja as that pro cape can now be moved over to one of the mages and that's exactly what was done shum gonna go ahead and warp out and check these boxes here and that's the ruby this was the correct play which means yep. that if that loot is over on the melmond area shum's in go mode and DM probably starting to think that his loot goblin's catching up to him. Went ahead and skipped two rooms of chests there. So definitely trying to balance the how much do I loot? How much do I just go? The only thing I'm not sure about is if the 
better trapped treasure is on and it is not so that is something that really isn't too bad of a play four hits coming in for 295 on carry one a fade for 228 a nuke coming out for 113 and sleep who hitting half the party yeah but one of them gets back up immediately and then the other one follows suit four hits for 200 coming in from the ninja and the knight four for 274 and that is a carry one dead as Shum is approaching Kraken one. Get a live two cast in our uh, black mage over here, and we're back to go for a DM. And Kraken one, call it Jay. Oh my. So that's an invis two. I think that was a fast charge. I missed it. I missed round one. Okay, we got invis a new coming out. Yeah. Swing invis two Swing fast nuke. Four hit or five hits for four hundred. There's a fast, and then obviously the invis two. All right, let's see what this Maza thief can do now. Fight, nuke, nuke. One twenty-eight moderate roll. One thirty-five, but that's all we needed. And with that, shoots up two orbs. Unfortunately for the Bubble Soda Company, there is no carbonation tonight. It's okay, Oslato, don't worry. Which, speaking of which, let's give a, a big shout out to our tracker and our restreamer. So, Oslato, we have restreaming and Giganaut, we've got tracking tonight. So, thank you for all of their behind the scenes work. Indeed. All right, Shum is going to be heading over to the Melmond area and going to at least jump in and translate that slab in case it does become necessary. Yep. as I think the only incentive at this point that hasn't been checked outside of, of course, these is Marsh. It could Marsh, be Marsh. is not incentivized tonight. Is it not? I thought I read that it was. I don't see it on no, here. No, it's not. I grabbed it wrong. Yeah. Nope. So I misread. It kind of has to be through here. It's either through here or... Or it is in Lafayne, and if it's in Lafayne, that's a feels bad moment. Yeah. Which we'll see if we uh oh, we didn't save in front of Titans. I was gonna say we'll see if we uh reset out of an Opal Cheerio or not. Yeah, that's that's the real question at this point. Granted the Opal Cheerio would be useful for that other black wizard mm -hmm. for Shum. And being a high enough level, these girls for the most part are going to run away. We see Steak and Wings over on DM's side, which is fairly nice to see, and he's soon to be picking up a ribbon from the ferry at the lake. Yep. Alright, Shrimbabi going to give us a uh, look here at Sarda. Let's see what we have. Is it going to be Sarda, or is it going to be Sadra? <laughs> Ooh. Oh, we don't know yet. I mean, this this is a line. This is oh. a fetch quest line, and there is the ribbon plus two for DM. Gonna go ahead and throw that onto the white wizard. So DM may be giving us the actual information here if we go down and check Lathane in a second. Yep, that's gonna be the big thing. Checking to see how many heal pots and... Looks like it's 59, picking up 40 on the nose. All right. Steak and wings. I like the steak and wings encounter. It's uh, it's pretty good EXP. Unfortunately, gets the FFR special, kills the wings, but does not get the kill on the steak. <laughs> Alright, so let's see what the Loopa Loopas give us. Is it going to be that TNT? Is this going to be it? Or are we going to get the crystal here and still be delayed? TNT, you mean crown? Uh, oh yeah. Whoops. <laughs> it's Matoya's <laughs> crystal. Okay. Yeah, no, I, yeah, I would say I thought we got TNT from Sarda. So. Yeah, TNT came in from Sadra. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was wondering if it was going to go down that line or this one, but tch, we got to delay both of them. 
All right. Time to pick up Cure 4 on the night. And I don't think he ever went back to pick up Cure 4 on the White Mage, but Life 1 wouldn't be bad to have just as a backup. Yeah, always nice to have that secondary spell, just in case you need it. And there is Fast for the Ninja. Shum running past the chest that normally would have the ruby, as Earth is not an incentivized dungeon. So, I think it's the TNT that leads into it, because I think the crystal leads into something else. Yeah. Well, we've got TNT or crystal. One of them leads to crown. One of them, and eventually both of them will lead to either opal or the loot. Indeed. So, and we've got a giant question mark hanging above our routing. Jerkbirds being jerkbirds for Shum as they have crack, which is the worst thing to see. Normally, they have Stone Touch, which is also the worst thing to see. <laughs> Just trade one for the other. Why not? I mean, I'd rather see the Stone Touch than the party-wide instant death. Yeah. At least you know that when you can heal up later. All right. Speed Bump 1. Nuke coming out for 222. Swing from the Thief. Bye. I, I'm, I'm sorry. I looked at Discord. There was a Speed Bump around. What? Yeah, exactly. Okay. Ooh, but there are cracked mummies over here. Yeah. yeah. Those... So there is actually a chance of crack being on the Medusa script. I don't like this. I like the I'm eye. Not, I'm not okay with that being on the Medusa script, though the eye is a welcome find here, as that's extra EXP. Still tougher than Vampire. I beg to differ. It's about the same. <laughs> tougher okay. than who? Yeah, yeah that, that, that thing that we uh, beat upstairs, you know? Yeah, exactly. All right. TNT into Crown. Crown into the kindly old king with the loot! The loot. So that ruby is required to go to TNT, to go to Crown, to go to loot. And we got some massive loot goblining coming in from DM at this point. I know he's looking for either the Vorpal or a Katana. I know the Katana is the preferred weapon, as DM yeah. does not like the Vorpal at all whatsoever. It's. I guess these are some, some pretty dense chests. I'd almost skip this one, yeah. And maybe... Oh, okay, we know this incentive. Maybe check the right set of chests up here in the top one on this next floor. Or go for the Z's Gambit. Yeah. Try to at least go for the, the dense plays. Oh. Grim reduces with Poison Touch. That's fine. That That's nothing to be scared of. Scared? Who's scared? What? All right. So, Shum just has to go clear out Volcano. Gonna pick up Harm 4, Cure 4. And that'll be good. Gonna check these greed chests over here on the left for DM. 66 gold, a house, a wizard stick, and 96 gold. But we are leaving the other one, so we're trying to rein in that go loot goblin again. And gonna We've miss out a... on the yep. war mech. Yeah. We've got a Maza. We know this is doable. Like, it'd be nice to have something for that ninja to, or that, yeah, that ninja to swing, but... We can do this. Oh, 100% so. As va uh, wizard vampires decide to show up and say hi. Can't be too terribly upset about that. Gonna grab... <laughs> Shum's gonna grab life one here. And that's a few good levels there for DM. As he is on the bridge of destiny and makes it through without an encounter. Walks across. Okay. Okay. Always nice to see. to see that. All right. Tia one. Take it away, Jay. Oh, my. Make me do this again. Fight, fight, invis, and fast. Yes. 
And Viz coming off. Is Fast gonna land before the fight, though? No. Mazza, three hits, 155. We need to get some fast or maybe some temper on that thing. One hit, one damage. Thank you, Thief. Fight. Fight. Invis. We got some Bane. We're going to Bane strats. Do we get a Poison Smoke? We do not. Invis 2. Let's keep getting ourselves uh, dodgy here. Seven hits, 500. That's a lot more like it. So we're at roughly 700 damage now. One, maybe two more turns. Let's throw a Fade in. Ah. Uh, two hits, two damage. 470. Ooh, it's going to get close. We'll Fade do it. One, 180. Bane, insta-kill. Insta-kill for the win. Poison Smoke terminated. The Poison Smoke has landed! <laughs> Tia probably had like 70 health left, but Poison Smoke. Hey, it always feels good to get a Bane off. It feels so good. Alright, Shum, continuing through the volcano, just blitzing down to carry at this point. That's all <laughs> that remains between... Him as well as the Temple of Fiends. Scooting over here for DM to go down into uh, C. Can't remember if we went to Waterfall yet or not, but we know that we're going to pick up this Ruby here. Just see if he goes down through Mermaids first or not. But we got to carry. Indeed, five hits coming out for a lot and a nuke for 390. Four hits onto the Thief for 24. Fade for 115 by carry one. Slightly more of a speed bump than Lich, but already gone. I mean, don't worry. Her legacy will carry on into Topher. <laughs> you mean it's going to carry on my wayward sons? What? Exactly. We'll, All right. we'll beat Garland. We'll be peace when we're done. Garland? I thought it was Chaos. Wait, what? Oh, uh, I don't know what you're talking about. Spoilers. I've come, I've come to kill Chaos. All right, Shum on the outside. Probably going to end up hitting that Matoya River system dock mm -hmm. in order to get to Temple of Fiends faster. That's at least what I would expect, personally. Yeah, it's... I'm going to guess 50-50, but... Oh? Oh, no, we taking this wrong. Provoca dock. Who goes there? I know exactly why Shum's coming here. Black magic. What do we Level got? two nuke. nuke. Okay. And <laughs> is that because why not? Are are we going to see it? Are we are we going to see the legendary zap against Lich two? Oh my. Oh, now we're going back to the ship to go over to Matoya. Okay. So yeah, yeah we'll probably leaving... have been 50 50-50 if it's faster or not. <laughs> well, leaving that dock is slightly disorienting because of mm -hmm. where you are in the world and the way that you have to get back around that slight peninsula. Just knowing that our overworld is reduced encounters. All right. Okay, though. 44-55 for the entrance into... Topher is really, really good in Floaterless. Oh, yeah. Hey, speaking of those badmen we saw earlier. Not having I mean, much, though. I mean, we were talking about them as well prior to the race and yeah. how nasty they'd be if, you know, it was a nine pack with damage poison or any elemental tier three or nuke even just yeah all sorts of levels of disgust that we were talking about prior to the race and 45 36 Shum has opened the final locked door and is in the back of Topher this could go very very quickly so question in chat here how rare is an airship this speed tonight 100% guaranteed. This is an airship. This is a floaterless uh, seed run. But normally, I would say that they're not uncommon, but typically someone's going to find the floater. Yeah, I'd say you probably have about a 50-50 in 
the regular flag sets. Regular in yeah. air quotes, as regular is different for everybody. I might give it slightly more than that, but yeah, it, there, there's a good chance, especially when you get to the higher tier of play, like, hey, I don't need that. I'm going to stop searching now. Yeah, it, it hits a point that the airship in and of itself just becomes a nice thing to have. All right, here we go. Nope, we're not going to see Zap used. We're going to see Fade, oh. Nuke, Nuke, and a Swing. Nuke 119, Fade 182, Swing 515, and Speed Bump 2 is no more. That's all we need. Now, we have seen Mid Topher in a few of these flag sets, mm -hmm. but instead we have the normal Topher tonight. Yep, none of our shortcuts, none of our cheating going through here. We got to do it normally. But that's fine. As Shroom pulls up to carry two, we're going to see Fight, Nuke, Fade, Nuke. Nuke comes okay. out for 156. Fade coming out for 226. Thief Swing, five hits, 358. That was a paper carry two. Seeing speed and power strats come along here. Indeed. Shoutouts to Lord Fizzlebeef for the speed and power. And Shum, unfortunately, getting hit by these Gershark Wizzahag encounters, which are not great to see, but not the worst, as DM is about to pull up to Kraken 1. Shum's about to pull up to Kraken 2. I'll let you take the Kraken 2, Jay. Oh, 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 all right. Let's see if we do a little bit of healing beforehand. Yeah, let's get that Black Mage back up. All right, what do we got? Fight. Fast. A Fade and a Nuke. Of course we do. Three hits, 300 damage, but whoa, that is slight fourth dimension. Let's see if our mages can get through this. Fade 100, nuke 130. This is doable. We don't like it, but it's doable. Okay, another fade. We have some higher rolls here. 97, no, thank you, fade. Nuke 103. Kraken's probably, what, half, maybe 60%? 124. 268. We needed that high roll. Very, very good. That was, that was huge. Let's, let's bring some characters back. We want that Maza. All right. As DM approaches Kraken 1, opens up with a white shirt. Going to go ahead and fast up the ninja. The fighter's been fasted. Seven hits for 536. Bye. <laughs> Wait. Kraken 1 existed? Yeah, exactly. All right, some healing prior to Tia 2 on the floor. Jay, I'm going to throw it back to you for the Tia 2 fight. All right, let's get some equipment changed around. Yeah, let's get that ribbon on that thief. For a fight, a fast, what are you going to guess? Ooh, Invis 2 and Nuke, maybe? Yeah, Nuke. Still coming out first, four hits, 121. Nuke for 185. Going well here. Fast quad X, not have to worry about it. In this too, let's get some dodge up. Now let's see what this thief can do. We've got another nuke. We've got a white shirt. Remember, we have the white shirt. Lit two, a little bit of chip damage. All right, what does this fast do? Seven hits, 600. That's more like it. Nuke 170, another nuke, 140. White shirt, I give it one more turn. Let's see. Fight, quad X. Yeah, we think we're below 300 X HP. Let's see. 610. We don't even get to find out. It more than likely was. And with that, Shum has made it through all four of the Fiend refights. It is soon to be on to chaos. So, with that said, here we go. Ribbon's been moved. Maz is on the correct character. And sticking with the ninja in slot one, swing, fast, white shirt, and nuke. Fast is going to come out first. That is huge. Fire 3 comes out from Chaos, dealing decent damage to everybody except for the Ninja and the White Wizard. White Shirt's going to come out and raise everybody's evasion. Nine hits for 626. That's some big damage. Speed and power coming out now. Nuke's going to come out. 154. Fade. 481. Nuke again for 134 and a swing from the ninja. Nine hits, 328. Low roll, unfortunately, but not going to be the end of the world. Cure 4 going out onto 
that ninja fire three on that bottom black mage nine hits for 254 rub's gonna come out be ineffective fire three comes out for 26 damage cure four is gonna restore that ninja's hp second nuke 101 terminated that is shoom bobby finishing in first place overall as well as here on the restream with an official race time dot gg time of 51 21 get your ggs out for shoom that was amazing for floaterless to come in this quickly. Indeed. Let's. Oh, and we are joined by a Shum Bobby here in chat. GG's. Hey guys, thanks. So, how was the seed? How was that floater? <laughs> yeah, hilarious. Uh, <laughs> I really don't care for floaterless seeds. I'm glad I got through this one, but uh, I was just talking to Chanigan behind the scenes. Um, about how I thought to myself before this race started, I really wanted to take two white mages, and if Fade was slot two in level one white magic, I was going to take two white mages, and then I completely disregarded <laughs> the magic shops. And I was like, ah, well, now I found it, but it's too late for a reroll. But um, on the whole, I think it was okay. To be fair, though, taking the double black mage with the elemental magic plus was a very, very good play. And on top of that, your routing was extremely good throughout the seed. Yeah, except um, bumping into a, a canal that hasn't quite uh, opened up. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that that we, was we the only that. that was the only blunder you had. And I, I just want to know what what were your thoughts going through your routing? Oh, um. Yeah, I didn't really have much until the very end. I knew the Masa was on the robot, so I wanted to get that pretty much immediately. That's why I bumped into the canal, because I I um, wanted to get to Waterfall as soon as possible, so that way when I went into Volcano, I could just do carry right away. Mm -hmm. um, that didn't turn out to be something I could do, so um, I had to dive into Volcano to get the canal, but otherwise, uh, the only major routing decisions I had after that were towards the end of the game, whether or not I was going to turn in the slab. Uh, and, and so I saved at Melmond, and you might have noticed I didn't save it all in the, the tunnel or on the way to Sarda, yep. because I was like, ah, I don't know if he's going to give me a crystal or not. I didn't want that, the, the crystal. Um, but then he set me down on that chain for, uh, fortunately, the loot from Astos. But I, I was really split between, do I want to go pick up all my spells and translate a slab or do I want to gamble on um, on this chain leading me to loot and so I guessed correctly this time yeah well you did give us one interesting routing decision that's kind of what your your thoughts on here you didn't go into Corneria at all at the beginning you just like beelined it up and took out Garland obviously you had that elemental plus magic but was I, that factoring in like just what was your thought here like I'll grab stuff later or what yeah, I mean, with the, the Elemental Plus, I wasn't worried about Garland, and I figured um, you'd get the other side of the, the screen showing you what was in town. So, <laughs> so I wanted to <laughs> just kind of highlight, like, that's a, something you can do when you're aware of the, the bonuses that your characters have, is mm -hmm. just sort of get going. Um, I wanted more money just in case the spells were really good, and I wanted to buy a whole lot of them. Uh, and, and so it was just a matter of, like, not having to now save at the end, I know I can just walk over to Provoca and be done with this. And like, uh, lots of minor time adjustments there. Right. And if nothing else, just not double diving Corneria just helps out there at the beginning. Yeah, I, I tried really hard not to go into to towns more than once. I held off until like 40 minutes for Elfland. So it was <laughs> like, I, I knew I wasn't going to be able to buy anything until then. Well, we've got DM going through trying to track down his loot, which should be pretty soon, we know. But yeah, any other thoughts about what, what went on? Like, want to talk us through anything else here? Um, no, I'm just, I guess I'm constantly reminded that uh, I should be moving my ribbon onto the melee carry in Topher. <laughs> um, I, it was intentional that I didn't for Kraken because I valued the white mage more than I valued the ninja. I just wish he didn't highlight that immediately because <laughs> it was definitely uh one of those moments where i'm like well i'm hoping these casts work now yeah that, we that, turn one zap, that turn one zap coming out from kraken 2 felt really bad yeah i mean it happens oh. right so you make adjustments speaking of zap 
What was yeah. that for in Provoca? Uh, I had intended on using it, and then when I saw that Chanigan hadn't finished, <laughs> the impetus <laughs> to actually just finish the race was was higher than my desire to show his app on Lich 2. Okay, that's fair. So, the other thing I want to highlight is that Warmech fight. <laughs> that went beautifully for you. Yeah, the... I, I hesitated a bit, because I was like, do I need to do this now? And I was like, no, I don't need to. But again, if I got sent to Lafayne, I wanted to have the money. It was really about more about the money than the, the experience. <laughs> but uh, I was pretty confident I could do it. I mean, to be fair, the experience also was super nice to have, as that pushed all of the Light Warriors except for, I think it was one my black mages, the one yeah. Black Mage mm -hmm. up to 22. Yeah, it, it wound up paying dividends for sure. Um, I, I think the thing that a lot of people might be sleeping on, eh, I say a lot of people, a lot of ducks might not realize how valuable it is. Uh, was this plus 20 strength on the ninja it was mm -hmm. that was why i i sought the masa like immediately because that was going to be I mean, devastating as soon as you equip it and this is why you always listen for the jingle whenever you're saving oh poor dm mm. i mean fortunately not losing too many steps there but yeah it is unfortunate i think we've all done that at least once or twice or three or four or five times I mean, it's, a, it's yeah, something a, that'll hit you. A non-zero chance that I have many times <laughs> reset out of the clinic after reviving a character, thinking that I was on the <laughs> end screen. Yeah. I I have done that quite a few times myself, Shum, so I, I know how bad that feels. But yeah, beautiful, beautiful time here on Floaterless, my friend. Yeah, no, I'm I'm quite chuffed with this. <laughs> Absolutely fair. It, usually, I think, um, as a vet, when we encounter floaterless seeds, they tend to have higher scalings, which usually pushes the time up to like 65, 70 minutes. But the the scaling on this one, honest to goodness, I, I thought to myself, if I see like nuke in level one and life two red learnable i was just going to take four red mages because it's <laughs> viable on this flag set we saw you guys talking about that in the race time room i mean to be fair four reds would have been somewhat viable even here with nuke being level two yeah definitely would have um had i known that i might have done it just to highlight it but um mm -hmm. i also value running like red mages are the <laughs> worst at running <laughs> I think that they even had plus fair. agility, though, so it, it might have helped a little bit, but or plus luck. They had plus yeah. luck, yeah. Yeah, it would have mitigated a little bit of it, but the question was whether or not it'd be enough, and the answer to that definitely is no. No, I, I'd be nuking everything. <laughs> All right, DM is into the back of Topher. And we'll soon be facing off against Speed Bump 2. You know, is there any other advice that you'd like to impart upon the new Ducks? Um, I guess with regards to this seed particularly, or this flag set, um, just be willing to... To, to let like certain things go, right? Like we knew Matoya had an Opal plus five and it was so unnecessary given everything else we had, right? And so when you can identify that that chain is gonna happen where you're gonna get a crystal somewhere and, and you know where it's gonna wind up, right? Those hint givers are so valuable. Um, just let it go, right? You're, you're spending a lot of time on things that are nice to have and they make you feel good in the moment, but they make you feel real bad when you click dot done after five other people mm -hmm. well and things that may be better on paper but maybe only like one or two points so what are you actually getting for that little bit better armor that little bit better hit right for the most part i mean you're relying on evasion through mm -hmm. most of topher 
And so if you're getting hit, I think we've had this discussion before, right? Like you're getting hit with a critical, it's not going to matter. Yep. Yep, because one thing to keep in mind is that critical hits ignore not only your evasion, but a portion of your absorption as well. Yeah, as long as you've got your, your resistances up where you need them to. Call it good. I guess the other thing for, for floater lists specifically also would be to try to segment the world um, and, and get a whole lot of those checks out together. Or if you know that a chain is about to lead you to something, right? Like, I had the bottle. If I had already had the slab and the chime and the cube, now I'm leaning towards let's go to Northern Continent. Um, but without without the items kind of dictating that, you don't want to be caught going all over the world without an airboat. Kraken deciding to not open up with the zap for DM, which is very nice to see, but follows up turn two with the zap. Takes down the knight, which is the one wielding that Maza, but two hits 170, and that's a terminated Kraken 2. Yeah, our, our ninja there is holding the defense sword, which will well, it'll get the job done. On Where to, was that defense sword? It was in Dwarf it, Lock. Yeah, picked up from Dwarf. All right, we got fast white shirt and two swings coming out, I believe. First swing from the defense sword, three for 65. Second swing from the Maza wielding knight, six for 426. And Nuke's going to be coming out alongside white shirt usage. Swing for the defense, four for 182. And Maza dealing 326 and Nuke for 171. And more evasion. We have more white shirt, more swinging, more nuking. Nuke for 128. Another white shirt usage. Swing from the defense, 4 for 36. Lit 2 coming out this time. And then the swing from the Maza, 6 for 388. And that's good night to you, too. Level 24 going into Chaos. This feels pretty good. It definitely so I'm gonna, does. I'm going to let you guys call Chaos. I just noticed the time. I actually have to dip. But <laughs> um, I just wanted to thank you both for uh, for commentating and everybody for for doing the, the restream and tracking. Yeah. Oh, GG's. I'll see you around. Thank yes, and, uh, GG's. I'm hoping GG uh, to DM Stewart here, because it looks like he should have no trouble with this chaos if he can get past those pillars. <laughs> yeah, the <laughs> pillars are a bit of a pain sometimes. But with that... Right, have a good night, folks. Have a good yeah. night, Shum. We've got Fast coming out onto the night. Nine hits for 376. White shirt coming out to boost evasion. Swing from the defense-wielding ninja for, I believe that was nine damage, which is about... <laughs> what you would expect from a defense sword and so i gonna, helped <laughs> gonna go ahead and fast up 10 hits for 430 coming out from the knight damage poison Ooh. coming out from chaos a swing from the ninja four for four unfortunate c but it is what it is cure four gonna go out onto the ninja and it's time to start nuking nukes gonna come out 155 damage, swing from the Maza, 9 for 361. Cure 4 does get initiative before Chaos swings. Nice. 9 hits for 72 damage coming out from the Defense Sword, so not looking too bad. Cure 4 going out onto the Black Wizard. Nuke's going to come out for 166, so not getting too bad rolls. 7 hits for 10 damage from that Defense Sword. And the Maza swing, 9 hits, 562, and that's terminated for DM Stewart. GG's. Finishing with an official race time.gg time of an hour, five minutes, 12 seconds. Chanigan finishing between DM and Shum with a 53-48. With that, we are joined by DM Stewart. GG's, my friend. I got to ask you. you. How in the world did I finish third in this race? Because floaterless <laughs> can do floaterless things. But the real question. Oof. What were you looking twice. for? Something better than a Coral plus three. Coral plus three <laughs> can do it for you, but you need yeah. Temper or the Power Bonk for it. Unfortunately, defense plus five, that crit will help. 
That crit was enough. You have more crit with the coral, actually. Uh, really? yeah, I thought coral was better. Yeah. You have more crit with the coral. I was looking, but yes, I was looking for something better than a coral plus three. So, oof, losing not once, but twice. Yep, I saw that happen. That. Oh, that hurt. It happens, fortunately, though. It's good. Fortunately, on your second one, at getting the opal bracelet from Matoya's, you really didn't lose too terribly much. Yeah. Yeah. And I knew the opal bracelet was there from the beginning. I had basically no armor on the ninja. So that was... It was going to go on either the ninja or the white mage. Mm -hmm. And I picked up the white shirt while I was looking for a better sword for the ninja. So that became, okay, that, cor that opal's going on the ninja. Makes sense. Now, the question I have is, if you had found the power bonk, would that have been on the ninja with the plus strength? Or yes. would you have just decided to throw that onto the Maza wielder? And then the third option, which is another question, would it you have moved there, the, Ma the third option, which is the other question, would you have moved the Maza up to the ninja in order to have the ninja with the Maza and the power bonk? No, ninja, uh, ninja would have had coral plus three and power bonk, and knight would have had Maza. Okay. Because with a power bonk, coral plus three is enough. <laughs> to be fair, with a power bonk, pretty much any yeah, sword can get it done. Mm, valid. But <laughs> I've done it with a falchion before. It's not nice, I needed, but you can do it. I needed something better than I needed better than what I had. If that makes sense. Oh yeah. Um Oh, doing oh, not checking, not checking the uh, on rack continent shops first was that hurt? That, yes. that felt bad. Mm -hmm. That was my it next so question. Bad. But you knew that was coming. Yeah, yeah. I started to go to I started to go to ordeals, and I realized no, it wasn't ordeals. It was waterfall that had the masa because I was immediately going for a masa. Oh, yeah. I was immediately I mean, going yeah. for that Maza because, yeah. With that hint for the Maza, it then allowed you to be like, okay, I need to Blitz Waterfall in order to be able to get myself an extremely good weapon that more than likely will be able to carry me through the entirety of the seed. And the only real bump in the road was that canal being in the Google volcano. Yeah. Well, I knew I needed to, ch I knew I was going to need to check volcano or ice. If, if the item hadn't been on armory floor of volcano, I would have gone to ice. Okay. But I know that armory is a very quick, armory is a very quick check for volcano. If it hadn't been an armory, I'd have gone to ice. And if I was going, if I was going past Armory on Volcano, I was going all the way down to Carry. That's fair. And with Faden Nuke in tow, that Carry wouldn't have been too terribly would, bad. Yeah, yeah, I would have been able to handle Carry. It would have been touch and go at level eight ish, but I'd have Definitely been able doable. to manage it. Eh, yeah, with Fade level one, Nuke level two, it probably wouldn't have been that bad. So we, we asked a little bit what you were looking for there, but what was going through your mind? We saw you like checking a lot of boxes and then skipping some boxes. Did you have an idea like, hey, I'm going to check these floors and not these floors? Or are we just kind of yeah. going, I think I'm gonna here. Check stuff. I'm going to check high density. I'm okay. going to check high density and not far out of, and stuff that's not far out of the way. So um, Asher Trunk. So Asher Trunk. So... Mm -hmm. Right before, right before uh, 
vampire as far as earth goes astral trunk right before vampire vampire chest those are not out of the way everything else is out of the way um with i with uh ice with the uh, sky everything in mirage is out of the way right but everything in mirage is out of the way it's it's not worth the density but the two left and right side sky one high density not that far out of the way sky two everything's out of the way mm -hmm. sky three the four greed chests are right there they're real quick everything else is way out of the way yeah makes sense we were trying to talk about some of your choices as you're going through it's like okay so which ones are we trying to prioritize and not so Cool yeah, we're, we're prioritizing stuff that's not that far out, of, that's not very far out of the way and high density. Such as the Dwarven Armory after turning TNT in. Yeah. Yep. If I didn't have T, if I had already turned in TNT, wouldn't have checked Dwarf Armory. Um, same reason I didn't go around to check uh, the three chests in Northwest Castle too far out right. of the way. But I'm going to check the three at Matoya because there's almost no lost time there. You're walking that anyway, yeah. Yeah, I'm walking past those anyway. There's almost no lost time there. I hope that makes sense. Whether or not oh, yeah. it's right, that's a different <laughs> question. But it's at least logical. Well, seeing as you came in third here, I think you made some pretty good decisions. I am I am still just I don't know I don't know what made the two pe what made the people that uh what made the couple of people that forfeited forfeit. Mm -hmm. I'm guessing maybe it was Kraken Zap. I'm guessing hey. maybe it was Kraken too. It could have been the Kraken Zap. It could have been um, Crack on the birds as well as, I think it was the Wiz Mummies. Oh, God. Birds like, had Crack, too? There was a the couple birds, of rude scripts. Birds had Crack as well, and I, I think Crack actually was on the Medusa script, which makes it that much worse. Just say no to Crack, kids. <laughs> Pretty um, much. So, just... I don't know if you, I don't know if Yens have uh, said anything, but also GG to Thavian Hawk, Flurry, Herbie B, and Materia Steel, who have all finished. Yep. And I was about GG to get to, to that. Yeah, and GG to our three, uh, our three people who said, who noped out. Um, wow. Go I, no. Yeah, go ahead. Just over ten minutes. Just over ten minutes back of Chanigan, and fifteen and less than fifteen back of Shoom. <laughs> oh my, good lord! Yeah, I mean, you you played the seed fairly well, yeah. and I know you had asked me a few questions on some of the things and i can tell you've taken some of the advice into play mm -hmm. which definitely has improved you a lot so oh, yeah i do try to take i do try to when people give me when people try to help me out i do try to take that oh yeah why well, I wanted to ask you a little about your routing choices with your boxes there, because if you go back and watch the side by side, which please definitely go do, yeah, like, like always, will. you'll see it's it's the Luke Goblin thing, you know. But third and, place and that much, oh yeah. I mean, and to be fair, you had you both had different party comps because Shum yeah. ended up going Thief, White Mage, Double Black Mage, and you went Standard Party, which Standard Party always a good call. Yep. I get. I get real nervous about not having. I get real nervous even when Mesa is a uh, is is an incentive. I get real nervous about not. I get real nervous about Thief not having enough mm -hmm. melee damage output, even as a ninja. 
And that's fair. Um, with the plus 20 strength, though, on this specific seed, it wasn't as much of a concern. And that was one of the significant differences. Yeah, I could have gone Thief Rainbow. Yeah. Well, actually, re-looking at the uh, Blursus here, Thief also had that improved Cat Claw with the plus 20. If you would have found one of those in a armor shop or a weapon shop, that could have solved your problem there, too. Yep. I don't ever look at weapon shops. Unless unless level one magic is complete garbage, I do not look at weapon shops. I mean, okay. it's worth to it's worth doing it on occasion. Yeah. At least Canaria, especially with the improved cat claw blessing. But overall Canaria, it's still not a maybe bad Maybe crested or some, yeah. But maybe Elfland improve- because it's right there. Right. Yeah. With the improved cat claw, and if you could find like a silver sword plus five or something, like that's that's totally doable. But um, I do believe we should probably move on to final thoughts yeah. here before too long. Agreed. So with that, DM, any final thoughts? How in the world did I finish third? How in the world was <laughs> I within 15 minutes of Shoom? practice um it was an improvement that was a fun that was a fun seed uh that had fun routing choices i'm surprised that my routing choices worked out well yeah your your routing choices did work out very well and ggcu and we do have everybody finished now jabrin tr finishing with a race time dot gg time of an hour 25 minutes 27 seconds and billick bringing up the end of the race with an hour 28 54 all good times for a floaterless seed indeed yeah i'm i'm extremely chuffed at getting at getting 65 in a floaterless as you should be it's a very good time. You know, we do still have more boot camp coming up. Um, Wednesday, we have the polar opposite of what you saw here. <laughs> Instead of being floaterless, we start with all the transportation. The oh. airship, oh. the canoe, the ship, the canal. We also start with the tail. Oh sweet! It's an FE. It's FE in this. It's FE on the second half of the week. Yep. It's nice. FE on the second half of the week. So be ready for that class on Wednesday. Um, Luffy shouted it out yesterday. I have been practicing a lot for it, and uh, you you will definitely see some interesting things. There there are a lot of very interesting choices to be made with how FE works. And we'll continue having these boot camp classes for another few weeks. I believe yep. that there are six weeks total. So yeah, three more yep. weeks after this. We have three more weeks after this. It goes until May 4th. And then the Duck Derby will be starting on the 5th. So be ready for that. On top mm-hmm. of that, we do have submissions open for the FFR Summer Marathon. And also on top of that, because I got to give promotion for the event that's coming up here on this channel itself, RPG Limit Break is going to be coming up very soon. So you're going to have a lot of marathons to watch. So you definitely want to keep your eye out for RPG Limit Break. You want to keep your eye out for... The FFR Marathon, you want to keep your eye out for the rest of the Duckling Boot Camp as well as the Duck Derby itself. But, Jay, I believe you have a promotion that you need to make. Yeah, well, it, you, you missed one more event going on like really, really quick here. So those of us who are no longer Ducklings have a chance here in the next three weeks to also do a little bit of racing here. So every Sunday, whenever the 101 seed get or the 105, 106 seed gets announced, we've got our Platy Party coming up. So... Those who are no longer ducklings but haven't won a solo tournament yet kind of get a chance to all get together and run the seed pretty much blind. We get a little bit of a heads up with what's going on, 
but when the seed is rolled, that's when we get a chance to kind of look at it, see what's up, and then go. So if you are not quite a duckling, like you, you've graduated out of the duck class, but you haven't won a major tournament yet, feel free to come on in, join us in the platy party, have some fun, and let's just race up what's going. But yeah, we've also got going on later this week, a little bit of a plug here for our, our restream as Lido and I. We've got our own show coming on tomorrow night at 9 o'clock Eastern. It's our OJ Power Hour. This week, we actually have on your Duckling Dons. So if you kind of want to know some behind the scenes of how all these things worked, maybe how they like crafted the seeds and how they're trying to get the Duckling program up and going and their thoughts behind it, feel free to come listen tomorrow night, 9 o'clock Eastern. And if you've got any questions for them, we've got a little mailbox in our OJ Power Hour uh, Discord channel. So feel free to shoot us a question there and we'll probably answer it or ask it tomorrow night and see what the, the Don's answers are. But that's all I've got. Sonny, take us home. And remember, if you want to submit your questions for the OJ Power Hour, come join the Discord server. You can go to FinalFantasyRandomizer.com. You can join the Discord server through there. We also have the chat command that Jay ended up using that also gives you the invite to the discord. You can also check out pretty much all of our past broadcasts over on YouTube. Mm -hmm. So if you're wanting to see yeah. things that have happened in the past, definitely go do so DM. I know you're wanting to say something. So go ahead yeah, and take it away, my friend. I want to one other thing. And that's uh, thanks to, thank you to, uh, thank you to Giga who for tracking. Thank you to us Lodo for stream for restreaming. And thank you, neighbors, Jay Scheidel and Sonny, for uh, <laughs> commentating. No problem, my friend. It, oh, yeah. Always a blast to do commentary. And I do want to echo that. Big thanks to Shum for, and DM for running tonight here on the restream. Ozzelotto for doing our restream. Giga for doing our tracking. And Jay Shy, always fun to do commentary with you, my friend. Oh, yeah. It's been great. So with that, we'll give RPG Limit Rate back their channel. And to quote all of our good friend, Luffy DV, have a good night, FFR fam. We gone. <laughs>